Hello, my friends. It's me, Karen Valentine. And today I am going to start on um, this image by Ennis Guerrero. It is called Moon Witch. And she is a, um, a gift from Ennis um, if you are a member of her Facebook group. So if you are not, you can go on over to the Facebook group, um, join, and you can get this um, this lovely image as um, as part of the um, celebration of of, uh, of for the group. So we're going. That's what we're going to do. And I've been thinking about like what I wanted to do on it. And to be honest, the um, the image that Ennis Ennis's original image is all done in blacks and grays and browns. And I really, really, really love that color combo. So I do think that that's the color combo that I am going to try and do. Um, but I did decide that I want to add a, um, a moon in the background. And so I just found a um, an old Tupperware um, dish that had about the size that I want to um, to do the moon with and I don't think I want it centered I think I kind of want it off to the side so I'm just going to draw all the way around it for the most part I mean there's areas where I can tell that I don't need to be drawing but um, there we go and then anywhere where the the moon is where I don't want it. I can just erase those lines, but I just kind of felt like I wanted her to have a moon behind her, so that's what we'll do. And so I guess that's it. That's our first little step, and I'll go ahead as I usually do and start with her face. I have a feeling that we're going to get that done pretty quickly, and so we'll move on to um, some more after we do that. So I'm going to start with um, my white and I'll zoom in a little bit and we'll just start kind of adding the white highlights where those should go. Um, there's not, I don't, you know, like this this is at night, so it's not necessarily going to be a lot of major highlights. The white is mostly to help to um, show the curve of the face more than anything else, I think. So, There are so many images that I wanted to get done for the month of October. Um, some some of the artists that participated in that Spooktober event that we had have created even more images. Um, and some of them are so, they're so great. And I'm just, I'm running out of time to do all that I want to do, so. Who knows, maybe I'll be doing some Halloween images in the beginning of, of November too, because <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna get to everything that I wanted to get to. And I swear, if I don't get my nails done this week, I'm just gonna, it's gonna be very bad. They're gonna start falling off. Hopefully next time you see me, I will have pretty nails again. that everywhere where I want white. Let's go ahead and do I 
thought about doing this on the white paper because um, it's been a while since I've done one on the white paper, but as you can see, I decided, <laughs> I decided to still go ahead and do my favorite toned paper. just can't help but love how much it just makes the uh, the colors just show up so beautifully all right I think we'll go with that for now so I'm gonna do chestnut now I am kind of um, hearkening back to an oldie but a goodie as far as my color um, combos for this one. This is one of the early combos that I did in YouTube. But it works so beautifully and really depending on how much of each color you use you still really can change up the, the look of the skin. working on a mermaid, one of Ennis's mermaids, in my abundance of free time. And uh, that one's coming along really beautifully. I really love working on her pages. Oh, yeah, don't forget the neck. And quick check, are there any ears that, I, that I'm going to miss? Nope, no ears, so we're good. Just the neck. Okay, let's do some Sienna Brown. And when we use the light peach on um, this paper, it's really going to lighten her skin tone a lot, which is which is fine. I think I kind of want her to be pale.
wondering if I should put some red in around her little cut before I put the peach on or after. And then what color red do I want to use? Mm, how about we try, that might be too pink. Mahogany red might be too. Let's try some henna. I'll just do a little bit of that. It may all blend away. I don't know. I might have to put it back. Okay. Light peach. of a short pencil. I kind of feel like I didn't um, do a very good job of, of uh, making that transition very good. And I don't know why. I don't, I don't know why, but I'm going to try this beige sienna to see what that looks like. Takes a little bit of that pink away. We'll, we'll stop there. Okay, back to the light peach. I might add some of that beige sienna on here. Maybe we'll use that to blend instead of the uh, eggshell. Or maybe not to blend, but just to add as another layer, I think. have my fancy brush with me so I'll just use one of my paint brushes <laughs> Okay, I kind of liked what that beige sienna did. So I think I'm gonna add a layer of beige sienna. Not over the highlights though. I think we'll leave the highlights alone. So 
So I'm not pressing down very hard on this. We did this already. Okay, now what? I don't know. I think burnt ochre will make her too suntanned. I'm not sure what this peach beige will do. You know what? I think I'm going to use this peach beige to blend. Chestnut, chestnut, I'm going to come back in, I'm debating on how, um, I might want to use Sienna Brown instead. browns do I have that I can use? Sepia? That might be too dark. Let me see. I think I might try the sepia. My goodness, I'm so glad I heard the camera shut off or that could have been really, really unpleasant for me. Um, yes, I got a little notification that my iPhone storage was full because I forgot to delete old video off of there. So hopefully that problem is taken care of and you won't do that again. No, I'm not sure if I'm crazy about the way that this sepia is. It's not the color, it's how it's laying down on the paper. So... I don't know. Part of the problem could be I need to, again, do her eyes and lips. You know how I am about that. Um, let's add some, I 
think I have light umber here somewhere. Out. Did I pull it? No, I didn't pull it. Okay, so let's, I think I'm going to try some light umber. Again, this might be too warm. Part of me wanted to leave her without blush and stuff, but I think I just can't do it. I think I have to add something. So I think I'll, I'll use the henna and we'll do just a little bit. I just can't help myself. some heavy blending yet. Let's do some um, grade lavender first. So this gray lavender kind of goes in all the places that it would be shadowed or a little bit darker. feel like there's something not quite right about her nose. All right, let's uh, blend with the Karen Dash blender. I think I'm going to use uh, black grape for these deepest shadows.
there. That's good. Not sure what I'm going to use around the eyes yet. And I'm probably going to wind up using <laughs> espresso. Even though it's um, that's a pretty warm color, I think. So I'm going to put light umber in her irises. And espresso outside. get her pupils a little bit bigger. Do I want to use, I don't know why I have gray. Let's get the nectar in here. And you know what, let's do a little bit of white. of her eyes. She's already so dark underneath. I might do that with another color if I can. I think I'm going to take some. 
let's try light umber. Sometimes that's, sometimes I feel like I should have gone in and gotten rid of that darkness underneath her eyes. other blender, my Prisma blender. Let's see what happens. I'm not sure how I feel about this yet. So I'm going to take some white, and I'm going to put that uh, I'm almost tempted to get my black markers out for the eyelashes. There's something about here I don't like, and I'm not sure what it is. I'm going to go ahead and do her eyebrows because with espresso. Sometimes just getting those bits filled in really helps to make it make more sense and helps me figure out what I want to do next. I already feel like that's better. I might take some black and go around her her pupil again. Just darken that up a little bit. Well, that's getting better. Um, let's do her lips. So, nectar, we already put the white down, and this time I think I might leave her with a really neutral lip, so I don't, I don't think I want to use red. So let's try henna or chestnut, which um, my henna's here somewhere. There it is. Henna might be still be too. I'm gonna just flip this over. Try a little bit of henna. Oh, I like that. Now, I wonder if I can cover up that line above her lip. We already put some above her lip, but I want to lighten this. So I put some white down first. And now I might try chestnut.
So now it's just not quite as black, which is good. I like it better. And a little bit of that, a little heavier right here in the spot where the two lips meet. pretty dark there on the top of her lip though. So I think that's as good as that's gonna get, but I don't I don't dislike it. I don't dislike it at all. Maybe I'll darken this shadow right under here a little bit more. Still using chestnut. Okay, I think I'm gonna go get a fine line marker. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my Arteza black fine liner. And I wanna see if I can make these lashes show a little bit better. It's so dark under her eyes. Uh, I think that's just going to have to be good enough. I don't... I don't dislike it. I mean, that's that's what Ennis does. She gives us those really dark, uh, those really dark smudges under her eyes. And a lot of the times before I ever even print, I will remove that so that I can come in and um, add it in the way I want, where I have a little bit more control. But I didn't do that this time. This time I just printed it as is. So this is light umber that I have in my hand. Don't you hate it when you know you have a pencil or a blender laying on your table and you cannot find it? It's like, I just used it. It has to be here. Okay, so typically I would do freckles with the um, pan pastels. But I'm going to give this a try with just colored pencil. So this is chestnut. And I might do a combination of chestnut and sienna brown. Make some a little bit darker. I guess that's good. 
I just put a little bit more shadow there in between. And that little, <laughs> I need to think, I need to find out what the name of that is. I can never remember. That black. And I almost feel like I want just a touch more. Call that done. All right, let's um, let's move on to her hair. I need to um, get some different pencils, so I will go get those, and I'll see you in just a flash. All righty. So I have not done a hair color like this before, so. I'm winging it, so hopefully, hopefully it turns out okay. Uh, I'm gonna start with just a few areas of white, not a lot. Most of it will be, I think, the grays. So I think what we're doing this time is, because I don't know how much highlight would be coming in from the moon. I guess a little bit, maybe a little bit more white right here. That'll lighten things up right there. And right there. And maybe. Okay, I'm stopping there. Okay, so. I'm just going to put some streaks of gray in, kind of randomly. Just for giggles, I'm gonna do the black now, but I'm I'm basically doing it in the areas that I know I want dark. I don't know why. Just a couple of areas. rest will be shading so I may just leave it okay let's do some light umber
That cat is so cute. some gray over here. This is the 20% cool gray. I don't know if I said that before. I should probably have said that. Okay, let's do some espresso. Tuck some of this black right in here. And this is a spot that kind of sticks out, so I might even use white. Let's just put a couple of little highlight bits right there. So what I'm doing here, I 
always try and find places to stick these little dark bits because it helps to make the hair look a lot more three-dimensional. <clears throat> so even if for whatever reason the artist doesn't draw them in, if you're doing, especially if you're doing like a, a, a straight line art pick, um, you can add those in just by making little V-shaped um, bits in amongst the hair. And that's going to help make that hair look a lot better. spot where I feel like I should have some more light so I'm going to use the 20% cool gray well, I am going to blend into that light umber over here. Back to the espresso. It's hard for me to color just one color at a time because they're constantly um, making adjustments and seeing where another color is needed. So I rarely ever color one, one color at a time.
let's try this is um, Spirer Farben Black you could also use Polychromos Black you could also use Prisma Black but it's going to be a cooler black than this one So the black, I'm going to start, hopefully, <laughs> I'm going to try and start with just the areas that I'm going to want to be the darkest. Now I know I put gray right there, but I'm kind of feeling like I want a little bit of dark right there instead. So. So I'm going to go with the darkest areas first, and then if I want to make it darker, I'll go ahead and add it to the rest. But I, I have to say, I kind of like her dark, or her light. I kind of like this light brown color. So I might not, I might not go too heavy with the black. And we'll let the black um, be in her hat and her, her dress. I think I need espresso right here. Okay, there's a lot of areas that are still missing some color in there, um, which is easy to do when you're working on tan paper. So I'm just going to come in with my lightest brown, which is that light umber. Make sure that I'm covering all the paper.
Okay. So underneath this leaf will probably be pretty dark. Into this bit here. some espresso atop of some of this gray. All right, I'm not sure if I'm gonna like what happens when I blend or not, because I really like the way it looks right now, but you never know, I might like it even better. So when I blend, I'm going to blend as if I'm using a pencil. So I'm going to blend in straight strokes so that I maintain the um, stripiness of the hair. I don't want it to all blend out into one big mess. I want it to be still look like you can see the stripes. was not the direction I thought I was going to go, but I like it a lot. So this strand right there feels a little bit thick and light. So I'm going to put some color in there to kind of break that up a little bit. So that was espresso. I really like this. All right, so I think a little bit more color down here, but I'm going to use the light umber. some on that leaf, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. All 
I like this quite a bit. I'm really happy with that. I think I'm going to stop for now with the hair. Um, we can always come back to it and work on it some more after we get some more bits of this done, but I think that that is just what I want. I like that color a lot. <laughs> so, yay. Okay, um, I'm going to um, turn off the video and see where we're at and see if I want to keep going or if we'll do that for another video. So I'll see you in just a minute. Okay, I am back and I've decided to go ahead and try and do the kitty. So that is what we're going to do. So I'm going to start with my white just like I would if I was doing her face. And put in the places where I feel like there would be highlight. On top of her little nose. She's so cute. And let's see, she would have, I don't see her whiskers, but she would have whiskers. So I'm gonna put some in. And they might get covered up, but at least they're they're kind of established now. So I'm gonna try and do all of my strokes with kind of flicky motions because I would hope that that would replicate her hair. I don't know. I haven't done a whole lot of animals, so this is kind of a cross your fingers and hope they turn out kind of a moment, so. Do black cats have pink noses or dark noses? I need to look that up because I don't know the answer to that. So, let me pull my handy dandy little iPad out. And go black cat noses <laughs> noses search okay so they're black so that helps so we won't do anything there i don't want her to be solid black i want her to be Excuse me, shades of black and brown, um, because that's the only way that I know of to keep her from looking. Black is tough, because if you don't add in all kinds of different shades of the other colors, then they wind up looking, um, you know, just like too solid of a mass of color. <laughs> So this is espresso.
I'm going to do brown. On the nose, we can always add more black if we need to. kind of thinking that I might have to just come back in and do those whiskers with Posca because the white's just going to completely get covered up. That's what I think. Let's try starting to add some of this black. Yeah, it's too hard to try and worry about what I'm doing with the with the whiskers. We're going to have to just add those in. So I'm not going to worry about those. Hoping that what happens when I blend will be the same thing that happens when I blend black hair on this paper and then it just gets really nice and dark. Like his chest is just way too. There's not enough. Maybe we'll do some more espresso. And maybe I can add white at the end. think the white that I laid down when I blended will pop 
and lighten the um, the color so it doesn't look solid. I'm hoping that's the case. Part of me wants to come in here and blend before I even finish doing the cat so I can see what I need to, I mean, the head, the face, not the cat. Um, so I can make adjustments if I need to. So let me do that. That will help me know a little bit better. So I'm definitely going to have to come in with some more black. But actually, it might be a good base because when I come in with more black, I think I'm going to use Prisma Black. To darken. I think that's, I think that's good. So, let me just... It's like the espresso comes out. I think this is going to be good. The grays that I put, or the white that I put down, helps to lighten some of the areas a little bit. And then I can come in with the really dark black to darken him up. So I'm going to keep going with the um, Spiro Farben black. And I don't know what color to go on the inside of the ears either. I better figure that out. I don't think it would be like pinkish colored because that I think is the color that happens when the light is passing through the ear. So black cat ears. <laughs> what would we do without Google Chrome? Black cat e. <laughs> my brain just stopped working for a second black cat ears real real not not halloween stuff black cat wanted to give me costume ears it's like nope that's not what i want okay so the images that it is giving me because it's giving me a ton of 
a fake Halloween brown. It looks like maybe wait, maybe we'll go with brown. All right, we'll go with some espresso in here. And I don't know why, but maybe just a little bit of white. I'm going to blend and then start adding the really dark blacks in. I feel like I want to do his or her eyes. I guess we have to <laughs> have to figure out if it's a boy or a girl. I think it's going to be a boy. A boy kitty. Alright, so now I'm going to switch to Prisma Black and start adding in the dark. I feel like his chin is way too light, so we'll go ahead and bring that down. That could be better. Might have added too much. I don't know. I'm being impatient. I shouldn't be impatient. Just hang in there and just keep adding the dark. He's going to wind up looking like a brown cat, <laughs> which wouldn't be bad. what would happen because I just feel like that's too light but I want his paws to kind of be gray 
That's, I think that's better. I was looking too brown. Good. More black. sure if I want to blend or not because I kind of like the the way that the hairs are all showing here I love the way white pencil goes over dark colors on this paper. This this would not happen on my white paper. I don't know why, but it 
doesn't. I'm going to try and make this a little darker. Max. Not sure that I even really need this. I'm almost doing it more out of habit than anything else. Now, do I need to make his nose darker? I'm afraid if I do, he'll it'll just disappear. to do to make some of these hairs just oops that's what happens when your pencil is too sharp um eyes I looked up were yellow. But how yellow do they need to go? I'm wondering if this eggshell will work. Yeah, I kind of like that. Alright, and then he needs... I need to look up cat eyes again. It's, it doesn't feel right. Of course, I haven't put the, the highlights in. So let me just <laughs> look up cat eyes real quick again. Uh, black cat eyes. So they are, they are pointy like that. So let's just get the highlight in. Let's see if that helps. <laughs> it works for me. Now, do I want to use some Posca anywhere else on besides the whiskers?
sometimes on the wax. These Posca pens don't want to. I could go get my. Uh, what is that stuff called? That pen and. That powdery stuff that I did the other cat stuff with. But I'm being lazy. <laughs> this is working out okay. Mm. Not sure how um, how many whiskers to give them. I think that's probably enough. I like him, and he goes with the uh, the color scheme I was trying to kind of do with the grays and the browns. I think he's good. Do I want to make? Just wondering if I have with me something that I can use. Maybe this burnt ochre. I might just try and put a little bit more color around the outer edge. Just a touch. Yeah, I think he's cute. I like the way he came out. I really do. I might add, after we get other stuff going on here, I might I don't know. No, I think he's good. I like it. I like the way this page is turning out. Alright, you guys. I think for today that will do it. And um, when we come back next time, we'll work on the Probably the moon and the leaves, branches, stuff like that. So, all right. Yay! Well, hopefully it looks good on camera. You know, those HD cameras really show way more than you can see with your naked eye. So, it looks good from my perspective. So, we are going to call it done. And I will um, see you guys all on the next video. Thanks for hanging out with me. Take care. Bye.